Welcome to this video, Blooms for You, where I say thank you to the names that come up on my list as and when orchids open their blooms and I can allocate and dedicate blooms specifically to the list of people that I have currently running every time I see a new name in the comments or I can identify a new subscriber. So welcome to this video. This is one of my favorite series on my channel because I get to really say thank you you and address you personally. Now, for everybody that is not mentioned in the video today, <laughs> Maxillaria variabilis, aka Cousin It, is still in bloom, still looking marvelous, and even though I'm picking away at some spent blooms every day, I still have a few blooms to show for, and these blooms go to everybody that watches this video, that has clicked on this video, supports me with your view. So as a general thank you to all of you, Maxillaria variabilis, my sidekick, cousin It, he blooms for you as a massive, massive thank you for being here. Now, I do have some stunning, stunning blooms and a lot of people to thank. So let's go and have a look-see whose name has come up this time around, and which blooms are dedicated to those names. Cartwheels around the patio, anyone, everyone? <laughs> I am. <laughs> this is a dedication I was not expecting to be able to do with this orchid this year, considering what she's been through. This is Guariantha guatemalensis. Before I get into the details, let me just say thank you to Aleibis Diaz, Kenneth Liverman, My Fairy Terrace Garden, Sarah's Garden, Thomas Becker, Norton Orchids, Eva René, Ramon Veya, Lota Svetia Mark, Carlos Kripa. To all of you, thank you so, so much for supporting me on my channel. I am over the moon at the fact that my Guariantha Guatemalensis is in bloom. Honestly, honestly, considering what we have been through. You on my channel, my orchids in the winter, listening to me, voicing my concerns about the conditions. Everything that happened this winter is absolutely the opposite of what this orchid loves, as you can clearly see by the damage on the leaves. So she is going to look unsightly for a very, very long time, but not right now, she doesn't. Right now, she looks amazing with her gorgeous, gorgeous blooms. 21 in total, who would have thought? She lived on the floor of my grow space, the winter was bitter cold, the spring was colder than ever, ever experienced here in Spain, at least where I'm at. On top of that, we had no sun for about six to eight weeks. It was wet, damp, horrible. And during this time period, she was holding on to green sheaths. But then came the time when Guatemalensis sheaths will grow brown. And then it's just a waiting game for the sheaths to fill up with buds, get all fat and chubby, and then they push through and she blooms, right? Right. That is how it's supposed to happen. When my sheaths went brown, however, during this very, very wet and cold, continuous atmosphere, my sheaths absorbed all the humidity and the wet, damp, cold and became soft. Not hard and crispy like they should be, but soft. And I thought, well, never mind. As long as the orchid survives, it's going to be okay. I will forfeit the blooming. Because we know that when things are cold and wet and damp and soggy, rot can kick in and well if you're expecting buds in an enclosed space like a sheath that is wet you can pretty much park that and say it's not gonna happen but it did it did i even then resorted to opening the sheaths a little bit because they were damp i opened them up just a bit to allow some air in now, it was a risk to do that as well because the air was damp as such. So <laughs> am I allowing airflow for my buds to be able to dry out as they progress? Or am I adding to the problem of a wet sheath by allowing wet air in? Anyway, you can see the result, 21 blooms. Let me get back to saying thank you to Alebis Diaz, Kenneth Liverman, My Fairy Terrace Garden, Zara's Garden, Thomas Becker, Norton Orchids, Eva René, Ramon Veya, Lotta Svedia Mark, and Carlos Kripa. <laughs> because again, yes, it is about the Guatemalenses, but it's about her blooms. And to say thank you to all of you via the blooms for your support on my channel. I just got so carried away because here was another thing that was happening. This 
cluster right here is already two weeks old. And I was like, oh, you're gonna make it, you're gonna make it. Do I film you separate from the buds that have yet to open and then do a second dedication? But <laughs> ooh, the colder temperatures have had some advantages. The blooms have stayed super fresh for much, much longer than if it was much warmer. Not saying these blooms wouldn't last three weeks, but you know, to get them looking fresh and nice for a dedication, I think I was cutting it a bit close, but here we are. You can also see the color difference. This cluster has more of a rich, already sort of mature pink, whereas the newest open ones, which are open now five days, they still have a coral blush to them. But I love the contrast, at least what I see in the viewfinder, it's just amazing. And of course, another advantage is I don't have any ants on her this year. She's been inside until now, whereas usually she would be living outside since at least the middle of April, if not before that. So no ants, woohoo! Last year they started to gather themselves around the peduncle. Didn't do any damage to the blooms, but still, you know, when you want to go in and sniff the fragrance, you got to make sure you don't get an ant up your nose and all that fun stuff. Not in this case, not this time. So that is an advantage of the cold temperatures as well. Another thing I have discovered about this orchid is that her fragrance is true, whether the sun is shining or not. So heady, heady rose garden, spring, warm summer's day in a rose garden. That is the fragrance of the Guariantha guatemalensis. It is gorgeous, elegant, and divine. Makes you just want to add to the whole enjoyment factor by having an ice cream while inhaling this fragrance if you were out on a beautiful spring day in a rose garden, for example. This is her first time outside since mid-November. So the hardening off process has begun today. Now that I've dedicated my blooms, if ants want to have a little bit of a frolic, consider the blooms their jungle gym, they can have it. I'm just so pleased to be able to say thank you to Alebis Diaz, Kenneth Liverman, My Fairy Terrace Garden, Zara's Garden, Thomas Becker, Norton Orchids, Eva René, Ramon Veya, Lotus Svedia Mark, and Carlos Kripa using my Guatemalensis blooms to extend a massive, massive thank you for your support on my channel. We have ourselves a cutie here today. I get to dedicate my first time blooming Dendrobium Krista Erdmann to Elise's Acrylic Pouring, Majida Atta Plants Care, Faisan Bagban, Suche and blocked. This is amazing. I never expected to even own this orchid. She came as a free orchid in a shipment of orchids from Luke Orchidin. It was the first ever orchid that I got from a nursery as a free gift. That was a little over three years ago. And <laughs> I never expected this to happen. And then one day, poof, the blooms were open. The spike started to grow super fast. Could have time-lapsed that without even using time-lapse equipment. And this is their third day that they have been open. Now, normally I like to have some buds at the end of a spike, which guarantees that my blooms will always look fresh along the rest of the spike. Don't want to be dedicating any spent or tired looking blooms, <laughs> but this orchid would have it that it just opens all the blooms at once. Ta-da! And don't they just look precious like the little daffodils? Oh my goodness, the spring that I have had, I would not even think of daffodils until I saw this orchid open. I'm like, oh yes, it's spring, by the way. <laughs> Hello. But these little blooms have just, oh, they're so cute. They still don't have a fragrance. Maybe it's because it's a first time bloomer for me, but 10 blooms, that's not too shabby for this orchid being the first time that it's around. And these 10 blooms, again, to Elise's acrylic pouring. Majida Atta Plants Care, Faisan Bagban, Suche and Blocked. Thank you to all of you so much for supporting me here on my channel. I so appreciate it. And my little first time bloomer, Dendrobium Memoria Krista Erdmann, this spike blooms for you. I love me a frilly lip and I love me a lip that looks a little bit shredded. That's why I like Rincolalia Digbiana so much. It has the same kind of detail of a shredded lip, just gorgeous. So thank you once again to Elise's Acrylic Pouring. 
Majida Atta Plant Care, Faisan Bagban, Suche, and Blocked. Thank you all for being here, and I really, really hope you're doing well in your part of the world. <laughs> Look who has come out to play. Oh my goodness, I can't believe it. First of all, my Zygopetalum Trozy Blue blooms for Larry Jones, Carly T, BP Holler, Uzma Foods, and Colleen Taylor. Yay! <laughs> Thank you to all of you so much for your support on my channel. I recognize that in previous blooms for you, I would start just going straight into my babble about this orchid that is currently in bloom and only somewhat realize what we are here to do. So I wanted to get the names out, as in Larry Jones, Carly T, BP Holler, Uzma Foods, and Colleen Taylor right out there straight from the get-go before I get completely sidetracked. <laughs> and I am laughing, smiling, whatever, because yeah, look. <laughs> I mean, to be honest, I've tried to take some images so that the true color of the Zygopetalum would come through on the viewfinder. I've even taken the filter way down to see if I could capture the deep, rich, indigo it's not really purple but like a deep rich indigo of the lip and yet here on the viewfinder she keeps coming out pink as she does in my pictures i even got a very very overcast day where i'm thinking this is gonna work this is gonna help me i even have the rolling thunder in the background but i thought we're gonna do this still i do not get that deep rich indigo in the lip plus the more contrasting chartreuse of the petals and sepals where the markings of the Bordeaux, the deep brown, really pops out a little bit more. Anyway, I mean, you know, <laughs> this is now really going into minute details as to, well, I'm not complaining, but I wish you could see that indigo colored lip. And I'm going to keep trying to get some footage for it to really show up, but no promises. The images that I have now, well, I hope they give you an idea of how gorgeous the blooms of this orchid are. The orchid itself, yes, and that's why I sort of had a little bit of the giggles, <laughs> because um, she's not a really that presentable, let me just say it like that. <laughs> she's, she defoliates very, very quickly in my climate. But you know what? If she does this blooming thing for me, and then she looks like this well then that's my little secret for 11 months of the year and the rest of the time i get to show her to you <laughs> in her full glory amazing i've got 11 blooms three have yet to open one bud cracking open but you know with the weather deteriorating and this orchid lives outside all the time yeah i might be risking it thinking nah i'll do it tomorrow i'll do it next day who knows it wasn't even supposed to rain today and here we are the rumble of the thunder is telling me otherwise let me tell you something as well amazing here it is totally overcast as you saw i took a picture and put it in there to show you <laughs> it's really really dull but <laughs> The fragrance is intoxicating, no sun whatsoever, and here I am being bombarded by this gorgeous spicy cinnamon, sugar, molasses, etc. fragrance. My blooming alley, when I step out of the living room, I know who is in bloom. Even though she lives on the top shelf of my south-facing covered portico, she's up there, nowhere near nose distance, because I want all the blooms to open somewhat upright. This is working beautifully. All the lips are where they're supposed to be. And the last three, of course, I don't want them to start to do the wonky tilt thing, and all of a sudden I have an upside-down bloom. I mean, you know, <laughs> um, yeah, we've waited this far. So she's facing away from me. She is on the top shelf. It is a gloomy, dull day, no sun in sight, but her fragrance is intense. That spicy cinnamon with a hint of burnt sugar in the background. Oh, it's so delicious. <laughs> Makes me want to bake cookies right now <laughs> on a day like this. <laughs> I am so tempted to repot this orchid, but the new growth where these spikes are coming from right here, it still has space. So we're just going to leave her be and wait for 2023. Does that even make me a poet now? We're going to leave her be until it's 2023? Something like that? Oh, good grief. Anyway, back to what this is about. Massive, massive thank you to Larry Jones, Carly T, BP Holler, 
Uzma Foods and Colleen Taylor. Your support on my channel, so, so appreciated. And I'm taking advantage of my Zygopedalum Trozy Blue Blooms to say thank you to all of you for being here. I really, really appreciate it so very much. Coming in at bloom number 14 from my Sologny Lime Bay on a single spike that has been growing since November 2020. <laughs> yes, the spike is that old. So bloom number 14 is for Barbara Folpe. Barbara, I want to dedicate this bloom to you to say thank you to you very, very much for your support on my channel. We did not see bloom number 13 because it was during a time that it was nasty, cold, rainy, all that horrible stuff that we hate so much called spring, which should be beautiful, bright. Anyway, because of those reasons, bloom number 13 came and went, no chance to dedicate it because it also went over very, very quickly. Now, being a very, very old spike, this is a fresh bloom, well, maybe three days old, and you see how it gets a little bit tarnished and bronze looking, which in itself makes it look as though the bloom is fading, but it's the age of the spike. But Barbara, there's more to this. I could have filmed this bloom two days ago when it was beautiful and lime green, but I thought it would be super interesting to see the contrast between this bloom and something else. So how much time have you got? I think we need to go up a few floors here. Ta-da! How about that then? A new growth and a new spike. First bloom on my second spike of Sologny Lime Bay. Barbara Volpe, this bloom also blooms for you. And she is also looking much, much fresher, even though she is also three days old. But yes, I wanted to show you the difference between a bloom that is on a very, very old spike. And I wanted to be able to dedicate two blooms to you just in case the first bloom didn't match the expectation of a beautiful Sologny Lime Bay bloom, even though the bloom itself is fresh. And now we can bring this spike up because it's long and bendy. Check this out and put it next to the new spike. I have been here before with this Sologeny Lime Bay that I've had two spikes on the go. Once the second one started very quickly, the first one faded out and then the second one was the main spike and you know, blooms for you one after the other. I wonder how long I'm gonna be able to hold on to this spike here while this one is also developing. But isn't that amazing? We're back with two spikes for Sologeny Lime Bay and two blooms for you, Barbara Volpe, to say thank you so very, very much for your support on my channel. This bloom, the one on the oldest spike, has absolutely no fragrance. This one is back super intense with a dusty room fragrance. It isn't off-putting, it's just you feel the need to go into the room and open the window and let some fresh air in. That is the fragrance here. It's a little bit on the musky, dusty side. Isn't this amazing? Check this out. Wee! <laughs> Awesomeness. Sologeny Lime Bay, Barbara Volpe. Two blooms just to make sure there is no disappointment factor from the oldest spike. Let's give her some shade. There we go. She is amazing. Absolutely amazing. So happy. Barbara Volpe, your support on my channel, so much appreciated. Your comments, so welcome. I love the communication between us. So I hope that you're doing well. I hope you like Sologeny Lime Bay because these two blooms on these two spikes, they bloom for you. Okay, we have options here. <laughs> First of all, how do you showcase and dedicate blooms on an orchid that is so tall that Part of it is in the sun, part of it is in the shade. Well, you take a lot of pictures of the blooms and that's what I'm going to do today because I want to dedicate this gorgeous cross of Epidendrum renamarques and Dimeranda emarginata to Maria's Cute Pets, Christy Loy Orchids and Plant Lover, Dong Wook Choi, 
the urban plant lover. So I've got eight blooms, four on each spike, each spike on a separate growth. <laughs> and well, two blooms each, I think that works out perfectly. And I will be inserting pictures because as much as I love seeing these blooms in the sun, to the naked eye, it is gorgeous. But on camera, the spike on the right is completely washed out but you can appreciate the spike on the left and I think that looks pretty, pretty amazing. And see if I can reach around because they do get a blush of pink on the petals and sepals. When they first open, they are more green and as they age, they will go into a little bit of a pink blush. Love how this orchid performs. She just matches really well with her colors. The typical epidendrum, Rene Marquez that we all like so much. Maybe not even an epidendrum anymore, but that is how I have her on my label. So, Maria's Cute Pets, Christy Loy, Orchids and Plant Lover, Dong Wook Choi and the Urban Plant Lover. This gorgeous hybrid with my beautiful, beautiful blooms. They bloom for you. To say thank you to you for your support on my channel, greatly, greatly appreciated. It has taken a good part of three months to get to this point. This orchid being such a highlight lover, her leaves normally should be tinged with anthocyanin, not as green. But you know what? She has surprised me. She has blessed me. No buds blasted during the most horrendous of springs that we've had. I was not expecting this one to bloom and I may be repeating myself in other videos saying the same thing but having orchids we know they like a lot of light especially these epidendrum reed stem epidendrums and they certainly want a lot of warmth. None of that I could provide for a very extended period of time and still she bloomed beautifully so that I could say thank you via these blooms to Maria's cute pets, Christy Loy orchids and plant lover. Dong Wook Choi, the urban plant lover. Your support is so very much appreciated. I thank you, thank you, thank you, and I thank you as well. I hope you're doing well in your part of the world. That's better. That makes him happy. He's got his shades on. I have to remember to put his glasses on because it's been so dull. I keep forgetting. <laughs> anyway, now he's got his shades on. He's happy. If you are new to my channel and have never commented before, this is what I do. Leave me a comment. Let me add your name to the list. And the same thing if you have subscribed to my channel and you're not sure if your account is private or not leave me a comment as well it's the best way i can find you and add you to the list as well because you may be thinking well i've been subscribed for a long time and you've never mentioned me that is possibly because your account is private and i can't see you then so let me know you're here i really want to make sure that everybody at some point in time will get their bloom here on my channel and to be able to thank you personally for your support. Thank you very, very much for watching. Have yourselves a beautiful day. Please, though, on one condition, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye. Bye.